Welcome back everybody, this is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got another gun gripe episode for you. I've got a special guest here with me today, Mr. Clay Cheshire. He is with Munitions Law Group. Yes, he is a lawyer. No, he did not chase an ambulance to get here. He came of his own free will. I'm going to chase one later. Okay, maybe later. later. But for now, we're going to do a gun gripe. And so today's gun gripe is, so you want to be in the gun business, kid? That's what we're going to be talking about. Or otherwise, we'll discuss a little bit of the concept of strategic planning. Now, guys, I'm just going in this video. I'm just going to let you know. Some of the information is a little dry. However, if some of you have emailed me, wanting to know, hey, I want to start a gun business, or I want to manufacture guns, I want to be a gunsmith. This is a great gun gripe for people who are interested in wanting to you know, be home gunsmiths, all of these sort of things. So being basically in the belly of the beast in terms of the Second Amendment community. Actually, okay, you're going from being a consumer to now you actually want to make a business of your love of the Second Amendment. So where does strategic planning come into play? What is strategic planning, and how is this going to help people come out smelling like a rose? And it's a great issue, and I'm glad we're hitting on it. And yeah, it is a little bit dry, but, um, but I'll use uh, words that I think people are familiar with, asset protection. So when you start a business, you're starting an asset, right? And there's a bunch of different steps to how you do that. And I like to use the real estate analogy. I think if you've ever seen like a big company that has a bunch of commercial real estate, they hold each building in an individual LLC and they, they segregate their assets, they keep them separate from all their other stuff. That's what we're talking about doing here. And you know, there's I guess a couple different steps to it. Step number one is figure out do you need do you need a license to do what you're gonna do, right? So that kind of applies to the gunsmith thing. What kind of FFL, if any, do you need to do the activities that you're going to do? And this is a question that relates to you know a lot a lot of what some of you guys have asked us. So this is yep. an answer to that question. And and or do you need a Type Seven FFL, which is a manufacturing FFL, as opposed to just a Type One, which is a retail FFL? Um, so that's sort of step one in the process: is would I need an FFL? If if the answer is whether the answer is yes or not, if you're going to start any business, we always tell people. Even though you could just say, I'm Eric, I'm going to just put a sign on my house and I'm going to say I'm a gunsmith and I'm going to get a type 1 FFL and off we go. You can do that. Hmm. We tell folks don't do that. And there's a bunch of reasons why. Uh, the most obvious reasons are if you set up a business, an entity, it's going to protect your personal assets from your business assets. So um, if you were to get sued or you had a creditor pursue you, um, you can actually keep your business separate from your personal stuff, your cars, your home, that kind of stuff. That's where you start getting into limited liability. Exactly. So we tell folks, do that. And there's also some tax advantages, depending on what your business is, how many people own it, stuff like that. So there are legal reasons that are not firearms related, right, that are asset protection related that would say form an entity of some sort. And then with the licensing side of things, you know, we tell folks, look, uh, right now, I know it may just be you. And you might just be uh, renting a really small space in, in someone else's building and you're going to make, you know, 52 guns a year, right? Well, or you're just going to clean guns. Or or, right. Yeah, right. But you don't know. You don't know where the business is going to go. But you should plan. And you should ask yourself, if I start this, where do I want to be three years from now? Where do I want to be five years from now? And the answers to those questions will dictate how you set your business up, right? If you think that you're going to import firearms, you know, from, from a foreign manufacturer and you're going to do some modifications stateside and then you're going to retail those things or wholesale them. Start getting into 922R right. and all that mess. Exactly. But your, your planning of your structure might look different, right? You might have a parent with two subsidiaries and each subsidiary has an individual FFL for the activities they're going to engage in. You start, you start planning the structure around what your obligations are going to be legally to get where you want to be three years, five years down the road. So we tell folks, do that. Plan strategically. Think about where you're going to be in the future and set your business up for that now. It's like building a foundation on a home. Sure. Build. If, if you know you're going to need space, build your house on a basement because you right. can't do it later. You're not going to be able to. So that's, right. that's what strategic planning is in a nutshell. You know, it's interesting you mentioned it in that way. 
you know, the, the Second Amendment community, and if you refer back to some of our older videos, you'll see videos where we introduce Clay and what Munitions Law Group is about. I suggest you check that out if you're curious about, you know, what Clay does and everything. And then also, like, hey, you know, do you even need a firearms lawyer? We've discussed some of those things in previous videos. But we've also mentioned in previous videos that the Second Amendment community is a very specific type of community in terms of how it's ran as a business because of all the regulations. I mean, not only do you have the regulatory headache that a person who sells guns has to go through in terms of like, you know, the paperwork and all of the things that are required and all of the rules that they have to follow, but then there's there's every all the way down the line there's regulations to manufacturing, to exports, to imports. Every single step of the way is taxed, regulated, and just pushed into the ground like a redheaded stepchild. So it takes a, a certain type of disposition as a lawyer and as a person to understand uh, the big picture. I guess that's what we're looking at. Strategic planning is the big picture. Not only looking at what your initial goal is, but looking at where it's going to be five years from now, five year plan, a 10 year plan, and then coming up with something that is going to make sure that you have success, mm -hmm. not only business success, yep. but legal success, making sure that you don't get in trouble. Yep. And you know, you make a great point, Eric, because it's not just, you know, part of the plan may be what's your exit strategy? Do you want to build something and then 20 years from now sell it? Is that your goal? If, you know, if that's your goal, it may, it may dictate us a, a different strategy. And the other component to this, and this is this is something you just mentioned, um, make sure your house is in order legally. That's part of your plan too, because you mentioned all these compliance obligations. Well, we're big fans, and we'll talk about this, I'm sure, in another video of, of using SOPs, standard operating procedures. They're compliance based, but they're also just good legal practices for manufacturing and things like that. You know, you want to implement SOPs, and we can help you create those and you can train your people, and we can train your people on implementing those. And once they're there, you're following them. You don't need us anymore, except when there's a legal change or modification to the SOP, which we may often recommend. Um, we'll be there for that part of it, but those SOPs are gonna keep your house in order from a legal standpoint. And um, you know, going to selling stuff, I, I like to use the, the real estate analogy that we just used about the foundation. Sure. If you know you're gonna sell your house, um, are you going to get more money if you clean it up and fix the stuff you've not fixed? Or are you going to make more money if you get it real nice and clean and fix everything before people come see it? Sure. It's going to be the latter, right? So by operating things the right way and building your company the right way and adopt, adopting the right SOPs, if you go to sell the business, somebody comes in and looks at it, they're going to pay you the highest and best price for that business. It makes it more attractive when there's all of these things in place, such as uh, procedures, audits, yes, all of these things. Like, and really, the whole idea, of, and this is something we're going to go over in a future video. The whole idea behind like internal audits, that's part of the whole strategic planning strategy when it comes to you know how you would put something together on paper, how you would implement that. So, I guess the whole gripe being, you know. So you want to start a gun business, you know, you can do it, uh, you can do, you know, gunsmithing, you can do, you know, retail sales, you can do imports, exports, there's all these different ways that what we consider being in the business is, and there's a lot of ways to go about it, but just understand that there are a lot of legalities, and each of those individual avenues uh, have their own set of legalities and things you have to adhere to, or you can certainly be shut down pretty quick, you know, and one thing I want to mention in this video, I think it's important to talk about, is the anti-gun world always wants to point the finger, okay, at all, all of the Pro 2A people and they want to go, oh, we need stricter this and stricter that. But I don't think they truly understand just how regulated the Second Amendment community is all the way down the line from, me from the raw product making it all the way down to the Joe Blow who goes in with his grandkid and buys a hunting rifle and fills out a 4473. There is an entire industrial complex within the government that is literally like responsible for every step of the way, making sure it is highly regulated. So I think that's a common misconception. Yep. That people, they think that the Second Amendment community that is weak and that there's not enough laws and not enough rules and not enough things to make them feel safer. Right, but really, the the truth of it is, there's a lot in place, and if you're going to be involved in it, you need to know. Yep, and and I'll tell you this too, because a lot of people, 
I'm assuming we hear this question um, a lot. How much is this going to cost us? Um, I, I, I can tell you this. The, the, the startup cost related to planning things the right way and forming things the right way is cheap compared to the cost of having to address these things down the road. And so we tell folks, just like you would invest in buying a good insurance policy, you invest in good marketing, you hire a good accountant, um, you get a credit line, you buy some inventory. This is something that you need to plan for and the cost is well worth it. it, it it's really not that much. It, it really depends on the situation, but you'd be surprised at how inexpensive it really ends up being to do these things the right way from the beginning. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that too. It makes me think of this meme, and I know you guys have seen it. I know Clay has seen it. This meme on the internet, and, and <laughs> Chad's over there laughing because he probably knows what I'm going to talk about. So have you ever seen that meme where there's two pictures side by side, and one picture is like a stick figure of a lion, and then the other one is like this majestic, beautifully drawn lion? And, and it's like when someone tells me to cut my rates for a job, like you get what you pay for. Like, you, do you want the stick figure lion and live with that? Or do you want something that's really well drawn? I mean, and, and that's the thing, you know, having that basis, you know, sometimes not doing something the right way off the gate is way more expensive in the long run than just doing it right the first time. I guess that's the analogy there I was trying to create. And, it, and it's true. It's a lot more cost effective to prevent a problem than it is to fix a problem. I mean, it's kind of like um, the analogy of you go to the doctor and he says, I'm concerned about your blood pressure your cholesterol, you can either take this pill and avoid a heart attack, or you can not take the pill, you can have the heart attack, and we'll fix it later. Which one would you rather do, right? So take the pill. That's always our recommendation. The blue yeah. pill or the red pill? Ex ugh, yeah, exactly. I love the Matrix. but anyway, I would probably just go, um, whoop, take both of them, <laughs> and Morpheus would be like, what? You weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> I would call the doctor. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's the that's what we tell folks, and it's true. It's I hear true. you. It's true. We're not here to just so you know. We're not here, so everybody knows. We're not we're not here to. Um, yes, we're a business, but we're not here to just make money. We're here to develop relationships. You know, our clients are relationships that we want to have for 20, 30 years. I'll retire at some point, and these clients will still be clients of our firm. That's what we build. We don't build that by gouging people by taking advantage of them. We build that by trust and by people realizing that we're not we're here to add value, we're not here to take away from them. So we encourage folks to look at hiring a lawyer, whether it's us or anybody else, look at it like a professional partnership. Try to find somebody that's gonna add value to your business and who's really gonna be there to be a resource for you for 20 or 30 years. Smart. So that, that's pretty much the strategic planning in a nutshell. Uh, I know some of the talking points are a little bit dry, but the thing is, anytime you get into legal speak, it, it, it is what it is. It's factual information, and hopefully you guys, some of this applies to some of y'all. Maybe some of y'all want to start a business one day. Maybe you want to be a gunsmith one day, whatever. We actually get that question a lot about gunsmiths, so maybe this points you in the right direction, and it's smart to have a firm at your disposal that will take care of you and make sure that you're pointed in the right direction and that not only do you create a successful business, but you also create a legally sound business and you're not gonna wind up in any hot water. The last thing anybody wants to do is to have some legal issue like that. And especially if it's innocent, that's the worst thing about it, is to create some situation where something's innocent and you're not intending to do something wrong, but you just didn't know. Remember guys, the law doesn't care if you knew or not. Ignorance is no excuse of the law. You, you have to know what you're getting into. So even just as like a health checkup thing, like, hey, what do I do? What, how do I start this? I think it's very, very important to get somebody like Clay on board to get something like that rolling just to make sure you're on the right side of the law and that you're, you're going to have a healthy, successful business moving forward. So there's your answer. What he said. But also, um, let me add this. We're gun guys too. We like guns. We like to shoot stuff. Um, my law partner Derek has a flamethrower. If you've never operated a flamethrower, it's the coolest thing ever. So we're gun guys too, just so you know. Yeah, so make sure that you go over and check out the Munitions Law Group YouTube channel. Derek uh, does a lot of great videos over there. He is a great dude. You'll know. You'll see the big red beard. You can't miss him. Uh, he, he's, <laughs> he is a lawyer. <laughs> 
He's 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 looks like a Viking lawyer. He has full sleeve tattoos. Yeah, big. Yeah, I don't. So y'all went in a time machine and brought a Viking back and t- sent him through law school. Thor. 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 Okay, that works. That's us. That works. Guys, thanks for watching today's video. We hope you learned something. Clay, thanks for hanging out with us today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, and, and you know, it's we thought it would be so cool to have Clay down because he's local to us, and this is some perspective that we very rarely get here on our YouTube channel, so we thought it'd be fun to have Clay uh, discuss this. Let us know what you think. Is there some things you have questions about? Maybe leave your questions in the comment section below, and maybe in a future video I can ask Clay real nice, and we'll answer some of your questions and create a dialogue and try to help some of you guys out. Uh, if you have any questions, give Clay and them a call. They're great dudes, really good people, real smart guys. Well, I don't know about Derek. Sometimes he w- makes me wonder. But <laughs> anyway, uh, guys, thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great day, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.